good breeze, reaching downwind. This one is the absolute top of the rung for Caribbean offshore, so that's why we're here. Yeah, the boat is super powerful. Near 60 meters mass with a mainsail of 650 square meters. Jibs are very big, uh, front sails are huge. As soon as you are powerful and you are fast, everything is fun. Our main competition is, of course, the other uh, Volvo 70s. There's six other boats uh, on the starting line, so, so that's the ones who we want to beat. But uh, of course, you can have a crack at the, the overall as well. You never know. To make foils, we need to have a lighter boat. So we're starting up to lighten up the boat. So we around two tons out of the boat. And then install water ballast in the side to uh, have the same riding moment as the Volvo 70. Upgraded everything we could do. Uh, still some tweaks we can uh, play with and, and, and we're expecting we're doing this maybe 10-15% faster than top speed when it was the 70. The quality of the fleet is outstanding and you know, of course our main rival Scorpius. Uh, we've only lined up against them once but uh, really looking forward to this one. The record that uh, Rambler in 2018. I think both for Comanche and for us the record is possible. It's going to be very difficult, but we are aiming for to, to have a fast race. No? This is the sailing world on water. February 24th, 2022. It's an amazing race. I mean, we always say it's like coming back to Antigua is like coming back to family, right? The fleet is stacked from the top all the way through to the bottom, through the Zero fleet and the IRC1 fleet. I mean, it's just competitive the whole way through. I mean, the weather makes it nice, but the challenge is there with the wind, you know, and that's one of the big things. I mean, it's trade wind conditions the whole way around the course. So that makes it a big challenge for people to get, get around the 600 mile course and, and back into Antigua. We are super excited to see what this year brings. I mean, the fleet is amazing, and for us, that's the best thing about it. So good luck to all the competitors, and let's hope there's some good results for them. Okay, that's one minute to the start of IRC Zero and Class uh, 40s. So we've got a couple of boats diving back down from the, the start line, not wanting to be too close. What's that little red boat there? Um, we'll come back to that, Lucy. Just go for the big picture here. I mean, it, this is seriously competitive, this start. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, you can see them all kind of uh, trying to slow down there, probably two thirds of the way down the start line, just letting their jibs flap just so they can hold position so they want to be there and be able to accelerate down. Yeah. But, um, and some of these class forces are racing two up. I mean, that is. Oh, seriously. yeah, completely. You've got them two up, and then you've got these massive fully crewed boats. So they're, the issue for the class 40 is going to be getting clear air as these big boats yeah. kind of power over the top of them. And I think I can see Daggett 3 Corum. She's uh, pretty far forward, reaching across the line. And I think that's Warrior 1 as well coming in. So yeah. uh, there's going to be a lot of boats quite close to this start line. They're all on the numbers. Let's see there if that's we go. clear. Sails fully trimmed on, heading in towards the cliff. Okay, we had two guns, X ray. One boat. So that was FRA 26 was over. So that's one of the oldest class 40s racing here today. That's Selma Racing Academy. Let's see how quickly they can get back behind the line. Yeah, Polish team, and uh, we, we, we wish them well. Um, looks like they've got so a fairly good get out. What do you think, Lucy? Yeah, they've, they've managed to get out of there okay. So we've got... Um, who's, the, done, who's had a good start there, Lucy? Well, Who'd the closest you like? boat into the shore, which we now can't see, is that Warrior 1 that we were just talking about. And then that looks like you've got the... Swan 82 coming in there yeah, why, and, and why a couple no? of other boats. So that, that's a new boat to the owner now. He previously had a Swan 60. 
Um, but they look, a couple of them had a clean start, some of them are, are struggling now in the second row. Uh, yeah, a good Dakets. start from White, White Rhino. Um, they do a lot of Bermuda Newport races and uh, the owner is Todd Stewart and he comes from uh, Key West in Florida. Who else did you like, Lucy? Who else do I like? Oh, I like all of these races. They're very pretty. I'd race on any of them. I, I noticed a few of the Class 40s have not bothered going inshore. They're not getting in the fight inshore. They're staying outside. Well, a lot of that comes down to clean air. They can't do the manoeuvres as quick as the fully crewed boats. And so it's not, it's quite, probably quite a sensible manoeuvre just to be able to get off the start line, have clear air, yeah, yeah. and then not be, not be struggling. Look at that poor little um, Class 40 there. They, they've got loads of dirty air and they're going to struggle for a while to get some clear air. And it's not the best point of sail upwind for a Class 40. They're not going to be that quick, are they? No, no. very unusual to have such a large fleet, uh, apart maybe the, the Fastnet is probably the only other one, very, very competitive boat. I mean, uh, of course, you've got Comanche, but you've got also TP-52s like Tara. So you have a, a big range of uh, boats and the fight is going to be uh, really uh, tough. <laughs> Sailing in paradise, that's all needed to say. It's a lovely place to be. It's a great crew. We're, we're a bunch of sort of semi-grumpy old men and, and we're having fun. And I think that's the most important part. You know, on the one hand, you're racing through paradise, right? But on the other hand, with the twists and turns, tough race for the navigator. So that's a real challenge for me. Such an interesting, complicated race course, despite the fact that the breeze is always between 80 and 130. It's a little different every single time. And that's what's really fun. I think the composition of the fleet is super attractive because you've got the high-end Grand Prix boats along with charters and pay-to-play boats. And that represents what's great about the sport, is everybody getting together on the same race course uh, and having a go. I think that's one of the great things about the race. Everybody's got a chance. Uh, Maserati are just starting to power up. Look, they're starting to lift a hull. Argo are still kind of um, just wanting, waiting to power up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultima Motion. Oh. There we go. Link. They're off. And Power Play. Yep, they're hardling up oh. behind a, a smaller Look catamaran. Look at Power Play go. And wow, they're they they I think they're they've uh, they're starting this race like they mean to go on. Yeah, so, and that uh, and Roddy and the Choppers getting this. Have a look at the film later on, people. Wowzers, yeah. And there goes Maserati, so Maserati second across the line, and then we've got these uh, 50 foot catamarans. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty sure that's Group GCA, uh, uh, the uh, Gilles Lamire, uh, got, going well. We've got a TS42 and a TS5. Yeah, so that's uh, Vincent Wilmart's Banzai. Now, he actually won the Rourke Seasons Points Championship in a monohull. Wow. So, uh, w welcome back, Vincent. Uh, the, the team's all from Belgium. And who else did you spot? Did you spot Gidier Savioli, a TS5, the 50-footer? Uh, yeah, footer? I think he's right here in the forefront, yeah. um, kind of just in under the cliffs at the moment. Okay, yeah, and uh, that's a new class for the Route de Rum, um, the, uh, the ORC 50. And it's unfinished business for Giadi. He, uh, he has done one race before, we failed to complete, 2018. Well, they're all off now, so we've kind of got Maserati and Powerplay out in front. Maserati yeah. is the uh, most windward boat with Powerplay a bit more offshore. George and has then... gone to put his drone up. I'll just move the camera around a little bit, as much as I dare. And we've got Ultima Motion and Argo, kind of the, the second wave. And uh, the catamaran's just kind of powering up slowly, getting rid of the dirty air and starting to get going. Oh, my name's Martin Power. I'm the owner of um, Bacardi, which is a um, 44 foot sloop. And uh, we've come over here, it's the fifth time we've done the race here. So, looking forward to a bit of work on the nose, see how we go. Uh, the first bit's good, it's going to be about uh, 15 to 25 knots in the nose, which is what this boat likes. Then it lights and goes further behind, which we're not a downwind boat, so it'll slow us up. Hopefully, we'll get in front with the iron handicap by then, and they might catch us, they might not. My name's Brady Lowe and I'm sailing on Lincoln Mentor in the Tickle Classic, the Adelaide to Port Lincoln Yacht Race. 
Yeah, I, uh, as soon as I've been doing a little bit of work in Adelaide, I just knew I wanted to do this race. I've done pretty much every other yacht race on the East Coast and thought I really, and a lot of friends have spoken really highly of uh, Lincoln Week. So I really wanted to get in and, and give it a go. So one of the guys I did a bit of coaching with, uh, Max Sturman from Port Lincoln, sort of teed it up for me. Uh, I haven't been 30 footer sailing for a little while. So this is a little bit of a, a step back in my in my journey in time, but uh, I love it. I love little boat sailing. It's great fun. And particularly on the flat water in Lincoln, I think we're gonna have a real blast in the boat. Don't know about the upwind to the corner, but we'll see. Yeah, I think the big boats will have a have a piece of us because, well, they'll be all over it because we'll we'll get to the corner and then do a lot of light downwind sailing. It'll be lovely sailing, I think, across to Lincoln. But uh, unfortunately for us, most of the big boats will be finishing in breeze, so we'll just be be drifting across for a lovely Saturday start. Okay, I'm Bob Dunn. I'm the skipper of Venom, which is a 12.8 metre Ranger trimaran. Yeah, we like a bit of breeze, and particularly if it's on the beam, um, or you know, even upwind is is fine. Um, so yeah, the forecast is looking pretty good so far. Well, I've only done two, and uh, I've done you know a reasonable amount of offshore racing interstate, but uh, I've only done two Lincolns, uh, and uh, so there's some unfinished business here, and we we want to get there, and we want to enjoy the the hospitality that uh, Lincoln has to offer. Oh, crew, we've got a, a mixture of people um, who've come from a variety of backgrounds, from dinghy sailing, um, from keelboat sailing, from cruising, and we've been together for um, a while now, and which has been good, and it certainly helped to, uh, everybody to understand the systems on the boat and, and uh, how things work, and, and, and we're gelling well, and we're enjoying sailing together, which is, which is the main thing. Jesse, how are you mate? Good mate, how are you? I'm splendid. How are you yeah. feeling about uh, this little race? Pretty excited. Uh, hopefully we can beat Itchy Barn and SMB. Show them how Adelaide boys do it. <laughs> Pretty quick, about four o'clock in the morning last time I saw it. So that should be uh, time for breakfast beers. Now here comes Comanche, you can hear her from up here. Yeah, cranking on the, <laughs> hear the power. Incredible. Okay. And a clear start. So yeah, none of them wanted to be over. For one of those boats to have to turn around and come back, that's quite a big manoeuvre. Yeah, it would be a disaster for them. Look at Comanche going all the way inshore here. Yeah, so she's, she's definitely won this end of the line. Uh, and Scorpius is in the middle of the line. Piper's on a nice conservative start going yeah, out yeah. on port. They've got nice clear air. Telefonica Black coming up as well. Nice clear air on port. Yeah. And Sailing Poland's right there. Is that Sailing Poland or I Love Poland? I think it is I Love Poland, and that's a really young crew on that boat. They've got a couple of teenagers on board. Great to see them out there. Comanche got a cracking start there. Let's just give a quick shout out. Mitch Booth, skipper, navigator Will Oxley, won the uh, Rolex Sydney Hobart back in December. Pablo Arate, Shannon Falcone and Louis Sinclair from Antigua. Justin Slattery from Ireland. Daryl Wislang, Kyle Langford from New Zealand. And that's just naming a few of them. Oh, completely. What's interesting here is I said they weren't going to come into the cliffs. Well, they all are. But interestingly, <laughs> some of the Volvo 70s have had to tack off because they were getting dirty air off Scorpius. Ah. It's not often when you kind of go, well, a Volvo 70 is a small boat. I'm going to have the tack clear because uh, they're getting powered over by a bigger boat. So, yeah. Uh, and that's Leopard, they've just tacked onto port. They look like they've got a nice angle now going out there. Yeah, it'd be interesting Scorpio's coming back out because they're gonna move all that water ballast. I yeah. think Comanche's works on gravity, but the, the Scorpio's has to pump it up and they, uh, they're not gonna be as quick on the tack. What are we doing in the next two weeks that'll get us to this table that says, yeah, and this is exactly. Well, are you going to write, you, you you gonna write that up? But yeah. I can build a team around that, and even for this summer. Um, yeah, it's got to be this many people for this long. This is how, and Sean will tell us how much it's going to roughly cost. Yeah. This is how much design, how much time we're using Guillaume, Romaric, Tim, the whole bag of tricks. You know, I, I don't 
feel like I can sit in here and say, well, 100% go and get that record on that day in that window. So I think, I just hope everyone's realistic that, you know, we're probably the best team ever in the world to, to have a, a good shot at doing that, but statistically, I think it's, it's not guaranteed. Yeah, exactly, you know? and you know, just for the record, I want to win the America's Cup again as well, Dolph, so it's not, oh, I haven't forgotten about it, don't worry about that, but it's, um, this, is, this is a nice, a nice little one to hopefully spot in there and, yeah, be able to tell our grandkids about. Growing up in Bendigo in, in central Victoria in Australia, you know, I used to love mucking around with land yachts and uh, building things uh, as a kid. This has really been a long-term dream of mine since I was a, a little kid. The fire has been fueled to really put together, um, you know, a, a proper package to, to actually go and have a go at it being really, really fast um, on land with a wind-powered craft. I think it might have taken Richard Jenkins, who's the current record holder, nearly 10 years to, to break the previous record. And um, it's not an easy feat. It's something that's a very, very difficult challenge. Amazing. We are very tight with our production really tight. Well, we know that we're guaranteed this way to build you the best part, and that's where we're at. We don't have time to you know, review another process. Composite capsule that Lenny's in better survive a crash. So we made, I made two, two new refined FEA models to make sure we don't buckle or break in the, uh, in the cockpit or somewhere else. But, uh, we are very happy, yeah. So, yeah. so this is for the work of, you know, double, triple checking the stuff. We do it ourselves and then we, we, add, we, we ask double and triple checks on time. This is the safest thing I'll ever start in my life. Oh, nice. yeah. so, <laughs> for the <laughs> We've gone from the design table, things actually happening from the production side of things. So the main vehicle body, is now under construction. This craft is going to be such that momentum is going to be our friend and weight helps with momentum. So older techniques here, a bit more of the wet laminate as opposed to a lot of the pre pre which we use with our, our custom uh, America's Cup class yachts. But it's really good to see, you know, some resin and uh, carbon starting to go on the tools. It's a really useful project to keep the design team going on, on innovative ideas as well as the production side. While we've We've got the wing in the air and it's a lot of similarities to a yacht. Try to keep the wheels on the ground, keep them gripping well, keep the rolling resistance really low. Those are the real challenges for us. So little information out there about how well tyres grip on salt and the behaviour of them. I don't have a huge amount of knowledge in some of these areas, so yeah, there's a lot of research involved. We see our job as showing the world we, we can move without energy without energy that is fossil or, or electric or whatever. Just think of driving your car on the motorway uh, 205, it doesn't look much, okay? It's, maybe it's okay, you know, many of us did maybe to try. But think that you have a 10 meter wing on top of your roof. It would be really interesting to do it where it's all desert, like more or less where they did Mad Max. It's, it's, it's a very fun project, to be honest. It fastest. The first time I think that you shake the wing on on a salt lake in a craft that you've sort of been involved with, you know, the sort of design and build of, I think for the whole team will be extremely exciting and um, there'll be a lot of sort of unknowns that we'll have to learn and then tick off. But um, I think that feeling of, you know, doing in excess of 200 kilometres an hour um, in a purely wind powered craft. You know, we've got some extremely clever guys behind the scenes. Ultimately, all we involved in, in achieving hopefully something that um, no one else in the world has ever been able to do before. Welcome to day one of the 49er and Ilka Racing at the Lanzarote International Regatta. It looks like it's going to be a very tough competition with both the Tokyo Olympic gold medalists in the 49er and FX class taking part. 
In the Ilka 7, it was a great day for Finland, winning two out of three of the races, with race wins for Noah Lockingham and Kale Tapia, with Britt Elliot Hansen taking the third race. In the FX, it was also a good day for Finland, with the under-23 team, Rona Grombloom and Vera Hocker leading, whilst in the 49er, Americans, Andrew Milaris and Ian McDarmid sit at the top spot with lots more racing to come. After a day of strong northeasterly breeze and demanding waves, all the teams are going to sleep really well tonight. Join us tomorrow for all the racing action from Marina Rubicon. The race was actually very uh, typical. I think of this, we've done this race four times and three of them were, were kind of very similar. You know, southerlies becoming southeasterlies. Um, the high pressure had been established in the bite and um, we had a good plan and we executed. It was uh, good fun race. Get here and it's not, not such a long race and yeah, you know, we had a few ways over the boat, but not too much, and and good good variety of sailing. You know, a little mm. bit of upwind work, then some reaching, and then uh, eventually got you know like a jib top up, and then ended up with putting a spinnaker up, and then a zero coming in towards the finish, mm. and then back to a spinnaker, and so great variety of racing, and wind conditions, breeze up, breeze down, but really pleasant sailing. You know, you have the you beat out of the start, you sail up wind, you, you get to the first corner and it's bumpy because there's wind against tide and, and then you go blast reaching across the foot and then you, you get to bear away at Spencer and Cape Spencer and you're still racing downwind and, and the racetrack's got a whole bunch of rocks and islands and reefs all scattered <laughs> across it and then everybody seems to want to put fishing pens in. <laughs> and all the fishing pens and boats and things that you can run into. It's uh, uh, and then of course we have to get up the creek into Port Lincoln and finish kind of around the corner from from the wharf, you know, neatly hidden little finish. It's <laughs> it's really quite uh, it's quite the race. They they've managed to pack in virtually every aspect of offshore racing into one race. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a great combination. We really enjoy it. That's why we come back this is our fourth year here and uh, I think we're the only boat from New South Wales here but uh, you know we love love coming here and it sort of makes sense coming up from Hobart coming to Adelaide you know, it's a long way from Sydney if you came directly from Sydney but from Hobart it makes a lot of sense for us and we have a great time here all the crew really enjoy it and you know the, the sort of friendship that the regatta has but you know some great racing as well. Look, uh, we're happy with the result. Um, we had a couple of little hiccups, but we're, we're competing against probably the, the best IRC yacht in the world. They are very professional, the boat goes fast, it's made for offshore racing. For us to hang off the back of most of the uh, uh, trip across here, we're pretty happy. We had a couple of little hiccups that probably cost us, cost us a mile or two. Other than that, the boys performed really well, very happy, everything was good. And I think we caught him up a little bit uh, downwind with our kite up, which we performed quite well with. The boat loves that stuff. Let's see what happens when we have the short races in the regatta here. I think we'll be much closer. So, great racing. Excellent. Uh, two years in a row across the foot, pretty challenging, and um, the crew just delivered as they did last year. We uh, unfortunately didn't get in front of SMB this year, but uh, yeah, two great uh, uh, races year on year, and um, it was hard work, really hard work. But no, nothing broke. Crew were brilliant, and um, you know it was just a flawless race. Loved it, really enjoyed it. We, we sort of kept pace with everyone up to um, 
the foot as we're usually doing and across, but uh, down when these guys get us, they've got much more pace than we have. We just uh, really sailed a flawless race. We couldn't have done any better than we did. I think this is the best regatta in Australia and uh, I think, you know, that's, that's, the race is a necessary evil for an old bloke like me, but the, the regatta is just fantastic. Love it, look forward to it. The social life, you know, the people and uh, just how welcome we feel and of course flat water racing and uh, Taylor Island race and uh, Megas, it's just a fabulous week. I don't think there's anywhere in Australia that has a regatta as relaxed and friendly as this.